Welcome to CodeCat 15 channel and I hope you're doing well. The following video that you're about to see was recorded during the career guidance session on the iOS Cafe Discord server. This video is specially for freshers and junior developers on how they can uplift their career from an early stage. If you have questions, then please ask as many questions as you can in the comment section. And if you feel that iOS Cafe sounds like a pretty cool server to hang out, then do join in. The invitation link to the cafe is pinned in the comment. That being said, let's begin. My name is Ravi and I will be uh, sharing some of the opinions that I have on how the, uh, you know, the career of uh, an iOS developer should proceed. Now, obviously, in this session, I will be speaking on several different things, like eventually what you should be doing when you have one to three years of experience and then when you become a senior developer and then when you have eight years or uh, more than eight years of experience. Everybody's path to success is different. So this is just uh, a kind of like a guidance that you can consider or you can, you know, whatever you're planning for your career, you can take these points with you and uh, you can plan accordingly. So that being said, this session is being recorded and it will be posted on a YouTube channel called CodeCat15, that is uh, my channel. So before we begin, this is just a thought. To be better in your career, you must be responsible in what you do. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this, uh, this quote over here is because we developers, we have the habit of doing control Z, which is undo. And sometimes what we do is like, we are not very responsible with the code that we write. And uh, because of that, what we do is like, okay, we, I can control Z this afterwards, but whatever you're writing, just think about it. Are you doing it right? Are you being responsible? And uh, eventually then proceed with it. Now I'm going to talk about the experience division. So the first one is fresher. And uh, what does fresher means? Fresher means a college student or any Android, PHP, or HTML, CSS developer who wants to become an iOS developer. The second is one to three years experienced developers, that is a person who's already into iOS and is having that many years of experience. The third category is four to seven years of experience, and the last is eight plus years of experience. In one to three years of experience, you need to do certain things. You need to learn certain patterns or a certain coding style. In four to seven years of experience, you will be a senior developer or a tech lead right? Doing estimates or managing a team or designing the next big app for your company. And then you have eight plus years of experience. And in eight plus of years of experience, thing kind of like change because you have been into the programming field for a long period of time. And then it kind of like depends like what route should I take? So I'm going to talk about all of these things in a few minutes. So let's start with fresher. So if you're a fresher, the very first thing that you'll come across is to, to practice iOS application development, you need a Macintosh system. And we all know that Mac systems are like pretty expensive. So what you can also do is you can go for Hackintosh. Be, just be very careful if you're going for Hackintosh because you can accidentally burn your system like how I did a couple of times with, with my Dell laptop. But you can also do is, uh, what you can also do is like if you want to go for a Mac system, you can go for a second hand system like a Mac mini or uh, maybe a MacBook. Or if you have, you know, if, if you can go for M1, then, you know, that's that's awesome. The second thing is today we kind of like live in a world where we want everything to be pretty fast. Like we want, just like how we see Reels or TikToks. I would say like whenever you're building your career, things cannot be rushed. And uh, the common pattern that I've seen what freshers do is they tend to learn 10 different things in one single day. And if you do that, that's not going to work out. Because even though let's say you you kind of like you understand the, what those 10 things are, but then you have not practiced them or you don't know, you know, where you're going to implement them. So that's going to be a problem. So don't be in a hurry to, uh, you know, kind of like take 10 things in one day, just take it easy. Don't compare your learning progress with others. Now, obviously, if you're learning with your friends, or if you if you hear if you if you're looking at tech Twitter, and you're seeing that, okay, this pressure is getting a job and somebody joined some firm like, oh my god, when am I going to do this? Do not compare your learning progress with others. Because because it takes time. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint that you're going to understand everything by looking at some YouTube or reading blogs or some documentation. Take your time, understand, and only then move forward. This is what I've been saying uh, for the next two points is like practice and only then move forward. Don't be like, okay, I'm going to read this theory part and I'm going to understand things. And okay, now without practicing, I'm going to move forward. Do not do that. Practice that particular topic that is, for example, if you're learning arrays or strings or overloading, overriding, practice those out, see what they are, because there is a difference when you read versus when you implement, because when you implement, you will come across a lot of things like, okay, what if I do this? What if I do that? You are experimenting, you're going into the nitty gritty details of the topic. So practice will give you more edge over 
just a theory this is one thing that many even many experienced ios developers do not do that is reading the developer documentation the developer documentation to me is my source of truth because over there you'll come to know what are the good practices what are the things that you should follow not follow doing those things reading the documentation can help you in building a more stable application and it will also help you in becoming a better ios developer practice data structure and algorithms the reason why this point is over here and uh, this point is something that you'll see across the slides now companies they are keen on ask they they the very first round of an interview is always dsa and this is a common trend that i have seen in india that all the companies are now considering or maybe the first round is ios and the second round is going to be dsa it it is it would be very nice if you can get a solid grip on dsa and to get a solid grip on dsa you can go for lead code hacker rank or algo experts there are many websites so you can go to these websites you can create an account lead code is free you can create an account over there and then you can practice your skills out and there is a there is a there is a method in learning dsa just don't jump into lead code and start solving questions i mean you can do that if you're if you have solid experience but if you're fresher i would suggest is like reading some books or watching some videos on uh, dsa basics which uh, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll recommend those what are those youtube channels or uh, books on dsa in the next slides so once you have done that then you can jump on lead code and you can start solving some problems last is don't be frustrated if it if things are taking time i know few developers sometimes they're kind kind of like demotivated because things are not working out for them and 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 i know that can be frustrating personally so what i would suggest is please do not be frustrated if things are taking time and as i said that i would say devise a plan that okay from this month to that month i'm going to you know learn few things about ios and give some interviews giving interviews is one of the ways in which you can find out like okay what is the depth of understanding in ios that you have because if you give interviews you'll come across a lot of things like okay what are the trends going on what are the patterns going on and stuff like that but uh, don't be frustrated if things are taking time good things eventually take time one of the questions that will come across when you're learning the entire ios ecosystem is there will be a lot of influences on twitter or uh, maybe on facebook they'll say that okay ui kit is dead you can just uh, focus all your attention on swift ui and i think people can have multiple opinions but what i would suggest is learn both swift ui and ui kit and the reason for that is even in 2022 even after 2 or 3 years of release of swift ui there are applications which are built and maintained in ui kit and uh, to replace all the work done in ui kit all that 10 years to 12 years work done in ui kit and to replace everything with swift ui it is not an easy job and it will take years and years but that doesn't mean that you should not be learning swift ui you should definitely be learning swift ui because this is going to be the future in the coming days and it will definitely give you an edge if you're going for an interview and the interviewer tells you that asks you a question that hey are you, do you know swift ui and it will be an advantage that you know both ui kit and shift ui so these are some of the youtube channels that i would recommend and i think if you are into ios development you would know all of these channels hacking with shift is strongly recommended because it has a 100 days of shift and shift ui so it will be very beneficial sean allen is another famous channel code with chris key lo loco let's build that app all good names all good contents and last is my own personal channel code cat 15 most of the videos in this channel are in hindi well with some english captions but not not all videos have english captions so you can go ahead and check those videos out now we are going to talk about uh, junior developers a uh, junior developers are those developers who are having one to three years of experience in ios and they have they have built some apps so i think what these developers should do is they should work more with the constraints uh, that is auto layout constraints and ui because these are the years which i think that if you are well versed with ui you can do anything my recommendation is like work more with ui and get much familiar with the constraints and how it should be done because in interviews the interviewer will uh, they'll give you some technical task and in that technical task they're going to ask you that okay you have to build this ui and what they're looking for is i think the constraints and everything that you add should not have any warning sometimes i've seen they even tell you that okay do not use storyboards or xivs use code and implement the constraint in code so it would be a very nice exp- a very a very good advantage i would say if you have a good hands on constraints in ui the second thing is get in the habit of writing good variable name and function name one of the basic principles of writing clean code is having good variable name and function names now obviously i have said this multiple times that a function name called do something or login button tap does not add much value whereas if the function name is authenticate user that would make more sense 20 minute rule 
uh, this is one of my favorite rule which I even I follow till date. The 20 minute rule states that if you're given a problem and you're not able to solve it, just try it out for 20 minutes. Then you can ask your senior that, hey, I tried this. Uh, this was my approach, but it didn't work. Common pattern that I see with junior developers is if they get some task and if they're stuck, the very first thing that they'll go is like, okay, stackoverflow.com. Okay, how to format date or, you know, whatever problem they have. Instead of doing that, I would recommend is take a pen and paper, you know, note down your steps, what you're doing, because this will help you out kind of like figuring out what what the problem is or what are you doing wrong and then you can go to your senior. Uh, what happens is many developers at an early age, they kind of like go to stackoverflow.com and they get into, the, get into the habit of copy pasting code. There is a term for such developers. It's called copy paste developers or copy pasta developers. And you do not want to become a copy paste developer because stackoverflow.com does not have answers to all your questions. If you're stuck in one of the oddball situation, it will be a very tense situation. So from an early stage onwards, I would say if you're having like a one to three years of experience, get into the habit of of trying to solve the problem on your own first and then proceeding to your senior for help. The fourth point is don't assume things. Now, one of the things that I've seen with developers is they read a particular user story and then they assume things that, okay, maybe it is like that. And then they do not clarify it because they're assuming that maybe it is like this. So do not assume things. We are not doing assumption driven development. We have to be sure that, okay, what you are assuming is correct. So what you should be doing is you should be asking your seniors or the business analyst or the project uh, uh, owner, if you can, like, hey, what does this line mean? Is it this? And if the product owner says that, yep, this is exactly what I mean, then what you can do is you can just ask them to, you know, like be more specific because what happens is then the QA, once you complete the story, then the QA will start assuming things and then the QA may raise a bug based on whatever his assumption, his or her assumption is. So it's always better to be clear rather than assuming things because we are not doing assumption driven development. Learn solid principles and few design patterns. This is a strong recommendation to freshers, uh, sorry, uh, freshers and junior developers both that you should learn solid principles and few design patterns which will help you from a very early stage to write much more maintainable code than just having a function with 300 lines. So the point number six is practice data structure and algorithm and the reason why I'm saying this point is because when you change your company like for example uh, you are working for an organization for one to two years and then you want to change the company the as I said very first thing is DSAs or not the first round maybe the second round is DSA so it is a very good uh, you know, a very good habit that uh, maybe on Saturdays or Sunday, you take one hour to look into DSA, practice some lead code questions so that you do not lose touch. In this way, practicing DSA like this will definitely help you out in, in your logical thinking. And uh, whenever you're looking at a complex problem, you will be able to figure out, okay, what I need to do or what algorithms I need to apply to get this thing done. Avoid dependency on third party libraries. This is a point that I have mentioned all the time in my YouTube channel, as in what happens is even for small things like I want to round a button or I want to, you know, call an API, even for the simplest thing, which will just need you to write, you know, a few lines of code. What developers have got into the habit is uh, adding a third party dependency into their code, because I think writing four or five lines of code is like obsolete these days, maybe. I don't know. But if you can avoid dependencies, third party dependencies in your code, that will be much better because because then you have total control of the code. And rather than junior developers, I think even if junior developers, you know, they accidentally add some pod and use the pod, it is the responsibility of the senior developer to catch it and kind of like guide the junior developer that, okay, you have used a pod, that's fine. But you know, this can be done in this way by writing few lines of code. If you can guide the junior developers that way, I think it will be much more beneficial. It will help the junior developers to grow in a better developer. Uh, these are some of the design patterns that I would recommend, which can be a good starting point. There are many design patterns, but I would say if you're a fresher or if you're a junior developer, I think have, uh, learning these four design patterns will be definitely helpful because these are, be, these, these are commonly asked design patterns in the interview. And these are some of the code principles that you should definitely know and implement. Just knowing is not enough. You must implement, right? Because when you're implementing, you will come across a lot of situations wherein, okay, how should I implement? You will know when you're implementing, you will know what patterns fits uh, a particular problem. One of the things that I forgot to mention during the live event was signing a bond with the company. Now, what does a bond mean? A bond is basically a legal contract between you and the company stating that you cannot quit the company for X number of years. For example, if a company says that we can give you job only on the condition that if you sign a bond with us for one year or two years, then in that case, we can give you a job. So what happens is many of the developers in desperation, they sign a bond with the company. Now there are a few issues if you sign a legal agreement with the company. So let's talk about it. 
you won't be able to apply for any good opportunities. Say for example, if you sign a bond with a company for like two years or one year, and in six months, you come to know of a very good opportunity. Now, since you are binded with a legal agreement, you cannot apply for that opportunity. And hence, you will miss many such opportunities during the tenure of the bond. The second issue is, if the work culture is toxic, you won't be able to leave the company. Now, say you signed a bond with this company, and after six months or maybe after two months, you come to know that the work culture is very toxic and the management is very bad. So even in this case, you cannot leave the company because you have a legal agreement with the company. And working in a toxic environment is very bad for your mental health. So this can be a problem for your mental health. The third issue is, say you find a very good opportunity and you apply for interviews or due to some reason you think that, okay, I had it and I want to break the bond. So if one day you decide that I'll go absconding, the company can take legal action against you. Or the proper way to break the bond is, in the bond there will be a clause. And the clause would state that if you want to break the bond before its completion, then you have to pay some amount to the company. And the amount can be anything that the company decides. So think it through before you decide to break the bond. The fourth point is, company may not increase your pay. So let's say you have worked very hard for an year and when the appraisal time comes, the company decides not to increase your pay. They can give certain reasons like, okay, we were expecting more from you but you did not perform well. Despite working for 14-15 hours, the management would say that we are not impressed with your performance and can block your appraisal. And the reason why they can block your appraisal is they know that you have signed a bond with them and you legally cannot quit the company till the bond period is active. So these are some of the dark sides of signing a bond. So think very carefully and of all the possibilities before you sign a bond with the company. Now I'm not saying that all companies who make you sign a bond are bad. There are good companies with good management. But make sure you do your research before you join any company. In the second part of the video, we will talk about the career guidance of senior developers and tech leads. The second part will also include the live Q&A that we had during the event. So if you think that this video can help someone, then please share. And if you're new to the channel, then please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this. Have a nice day and happy iCoding. Bye-bye.